right. Well, hopefully folks can see us. We are recording. And I'm going to share my screen here. I'll let you know who I am in a second. And can you all see the uh, the screen? All right, we're getting a thumbs up. So let me get the Facebook pulled up here on my phone so I can answer any questions that happen to uh, show up. Aha, uh -huh. there we are. I'm looking at ourselves. Okay, so um, welcome everybody. My name is Dave Celebrezzi. I am the Green Thought Coordinator for the City of Columbus. I am out of the Department of Public Utilities. If you're not familiar with Green Spot, um, we are a program that started back in 2008, meant to really engage the community on what uh, households and businesses and community groups can do to operate and live more sustainably. We have over 50 different ideas of how to green up your home, and we have more than that, how to green up your business. It's a free program to join, free to be a member. You can check us out on columbusgreenspot.org. And like most city programs, or all city programs really, about sustainability, when we think about sustainability, we think about environment, economy, and equity all moving in the same direction. That's when you really have sustainability. That's really when we thrive as a community. So that is what uh, we are aiming for. We also have a climate action plan, which is uh, our goal there is to become carbon neutral by 2050. And uh, you can check that out online as well. And that has a, a number of different aspects of uh, city operations, community uh, operations, if you will, uh, to get us to that goal. Because it will take everybody doing a little bit uh, to achieve that goal. So Green Spot, we have over 23,000 members right now. We have four Green Spot neighborhoods. Um, we have, um, I mean, you can kind of see the numbers there. We, we try to really uh, get out there in the community. Uh, we do tabling events. We also do presentations uh, to organizations and companies, to their, their employees about how to live more sustainably. These are a little bit about our collective savings as a Green Spot community, or, or as I like to call it, our Green Spot universe. Uh, you can kind of see the savings that we have there, and I actually need to update this. We've We've seen more savings since I put this together. So with that, we are going to jump to our discussion. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now, and I will introduce our panelists. So we have Aaron Sink with Yay Bikes. Uh, Yay Bikes is a nonprofit that is working to create safe, efficient cycling conditions in central Ohio. And Aaron, can you tell us a little bit more about Yay Bikes? Hi, thanks for having me. So, uh, yes, I'm Erin Sink. I'm the vice president of Yay Bikes, and um, we are really an education and advoca advocacy organization. So, to me, that means we help people ride in the conditions that exist today, and we work to improve the conditions on the roads that will exist tomorrow for people who bike. And so, we really do this two ways. Uh, the first is education, which is usually through organized rides and events. But that's where we help people learn how to ride safely in the different types of conditions on our roads. Maybe they need help finding um, a route that works for them, figuring out how to carry things on their bike, whether they're going to work or to the grocery store. Um, and then what to do in um, you know, weather conditions, right? So as a year round cyclist myself, I've been in the rain and the snow and figuring out how to use a bike in those conditions um, can be important. And then the second thing we do is really that advocacy piece. So that's all about building uh, better bike friendly um, communities. And we do that largely through um, empowering people to talk to their elected officials, policymakers, funding organizations, uh, urban planners and transportation engineers, uh, so that they really understand what it feels like to ride a bike in the different types of road conditions that exist and uh, the importance of having things like connected networks so that it's easy to get from point A to point B on a bike. And when we do this, we really focus on what I call the bike curious. So this is the person who's really interested in riding their bike, maybe making some trip by bike that they're currently making in a car, but something stopping them. Um, oftentimes, it's the perception of safety that there is a place that's going to be comfortable for them to ride their bike. Um, and so we, we ask for infrastructure that invites and encourages those people to use their bike for that trip. Um, it's something that I know well because a well-placed bike lane actually changed my life in Columbus. So um, that's really sort of how we work and how we hope to make Columbus a more bike-friendly place. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. And we'll hear more about Yay Bikes and some of their initiatives here in a few minutes. 
I want to introduce uh, Chet Reidenauer with Kogo Bike Share, which is a bike sharing service here. And Chet, you all have so many stations. It's like you can't throw a rock without hitting, not that you would, but without hitting a, a Kogo bike station. Can you tell us a little bit more about Kogo? Yeah, thanks, David. Um, really excited to uh, to work with Lyft. I'm the senior, senior operations manager for them. Uh, Lyft is the operator of the city's Kogo bike share program. Kogo was actually launched uh in the summer of 2013 so we'll be celebrating our ninth year of operations this year uh the bike share system uh is operated through the city of columbus's uh, recreation and parks department I and mean, we work closely with the uh, columbus uh, department of public health for initiatives like bike to work events um and as you mentioned what smart what started as a small 30 station operation has uh has almost tripled in size uh to almost 90 stations we'll actually be over over 91 stations um, by May this year. Uh, there's almost 600 bikes in the system, including 250 uh, e-assist bikes that were added in 2020. Uh, our stations range from uh, Clintonville and Linden uh, on the north side, uh, as well as Easton on the, of our operating area, uh, down to Marion Village on the south side. Uh, we're out in King Lincoln, Old Town East, and Franklin Park on the, on the near east side, as well as Franklinton and Fifth Valley Northwest uh, on the on the west side, uh, our most dense um, uh, areas of stations are in the downtown, short north, and around Ohio State's campus. And then um, back in 2018, we also added uh, a handful of stations in uh, Upper Arlington, Bexley, and Grandview Heights as well. So we're really excited about uh, how the system has grown, and uh, even more excited about the future. That's great, Chad. Especially with you know Columbus and Central Ohio supposed to get a million new people here within the next decade, uh, they're going to need a, a sustainable way to get around. So it's great that you all are, are growing operations. So I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Scott Ulrich, who is with Columbus Public Health, who is a policy analyst on the built environment with extensive knowledge on cycling and the city environment. And he, I don't think he remembers this, but one of the first meetings I had when uh, I started at the city about eight years ago was uh, with Scott and a few other folks. And it always like, I always remember that meeting because I was really impressed with Scott's knowledge of cycling in Columbus and the visions that he had, the, that vision, the vision he had about cycling here in town. Scott, can you tell us a little bit more about what you got going on? Yeah, thanks Dave. Um, and really appreciate you uh, having me be a part of this and really uh, appreciate fellow panelists, um, really great people you've brought here together today. Um, so my role at Columbus Public Health is kind of funny. Um, obviously, public health doesn't do, doesn't build any infrastructure. Um, so what we try to do in our role um, in advancing Columbus as a bike friendly city is, is a couple different things. First of all, we really try to drive interagency coordination um, because active transportation work happens in a lot of different departments and it can be tough sometimes to keep it all straight who's doing what um, what's being planned how it all fits together um, so we really try to facilitate that and and bring different stakeholders together um, different different agencies together and, and make sure you know left hand knows what right hand is doing and potentially leverage projects that that may not have otherwise um, happened um, another thing we try to do is sort of the, the flip side of what Erin does, right, in terms of advocacy. So she, she's advocating kind of from the outside in, um, bringing community um, into the city, uh, city work and trying to tr drive change from the outside. Um, and, and that's really necessary. And so what I try to do is kind of be the advocate from within um, and try to advocate for things from inside. Um, so when I can be a part of um, different decision making processes that people outside our organization can't necessarily be a part of. And so um, I try to have little interventions where I can to to change things in either small ways or large ways to improve biking conditions or improve certain infrastructure projects um, that might not have otherwise um, had some accommodation for bicyclists or wasn't the right accommodation for bicyclists in that instance um, before it ever gets um, you know seen by anybody in the community um, and then the last thing is really just like walking the walk and leading by example and as someone who does bike on an almost everyday basis bringing that user perspective into that decision making and design process because um, you know 
whether you know it or not, you know, most of the people who design these things are not necessarily actually using them. So really trying to bring that perspective of what's it really going to be like to, to, to be out there riding on that street or, or that trail or that bike lane. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Um, there's a lot of things I could talk about, but we'll have time for that. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. I mean, it sounds really what you are. You are the silo breaker. You're the bridge that uh, kind of connects silos uh, to make sure folks know what's going on and, and really a way, like you said, to kind of improve a project. So, yep. And there's, there's more of me. So things are moving in the right direction. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Again, you all being here. If you're watching, uh, you can type in the chat if you have any questions or if you're on Facebook, I do have my, my phone here that's on the Green Spot Facebook page. You can type a comment in there and we'll try to get to them. But let's start at the very beginning. So, Aaron, how did you get into biking and what are some of your favorite uh, tips to give uh, people who are looking to bike around Columbus? Sure. So I'm guessing probably like a lot of folks who are watching uh, this conversation on sustainability, I'd always, you know, ridden a bike as a kid. I enjoyed it then and I wanted to be a little greener in my everyday life. And I said, you know, I live about two miles from work. I should be able to do that on a bicycle. Um, and it was harder than I thought at first. And so that's the, when I said a bike lane changed my life. Um, I tried many times to kind of make it work, but I went way out of my way to ride on a road that felt comfortable for me with the traffic. And then uh, the city of Columbus and ODOT put in bike lanes on third and fourth. And suddenly I had a direct path that felt comfortable and it made um, biking be something I could do in my daily life. And so I made that switch. Um, so it's it's powerful stuff, but um, it, you need back up, but I was already a little bit there in riding for fun already. So if we back it up even to the like, so you think you might wanna ride a bike. Um, first, you need a bike. You can check one out from the Kogo system, which we absolutely love, but let's say you dug one out of your basement or your garage. Um, first tip is you wanna make sure that it's safe. And so, you wanna check the bike frame to make sure it's not rusted. You wanna check out the tires and the brakes to make sure that the tires are holding air, that the brakes are, are working, that the chain is sound. And then that, if, if those things check out, you've got a rideable bike. So check there, step one. Um, the next thing is gonna be figure out where you want to ride. Um, and I, I think start small in a way that you'll have fun, I think is the most important thing. Cause I think that's, you know, at Yay Bikes, we want bike riding to be fun for everybody. Um, so start somewhere small. I think in your neighborhood is really where I started, right? To that favorite coffee shop or watering hole. Um, you know, pick something that's not too far away. You know, two to four miles is a really great um, distance to start on a bike ride. Um, and I would definitely say start at non-peak uh, travel time. So, you know, getting on a busy road during rush hour is probably not the place to start, um, but your neighborhood streets are uh, really great places that you're familiar with to start for that ride. And then you can expand from there um, over time. And I always say, take people with you on those first rides because that's what really makes bike riding fun. Every bike ride that I do with other people is probably more fun than the one I do by myself. And then um, finally, just throwing out the quick tips, um, route planning is something that um, I hear a lot from people. There's kind of a barrier to figure out, like, I know I wanna go here, you know, from my house to this place. How do I get there in a way that feels comfortable and safe? Um, that's not a white knuckle trip. Um, and so some of the resources I personally use, um, First, I start with the Central Ohio Greenways system, right? Like those are beautiful trails that are comfortable for everybody, whether you're eight years old or 80 or anywhere in between, um, those are great and they connect to a lot of places. Um, the second thing that I will often check um, and the best way to find it, I think, is just to Google Columbus bike map. And so the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission kind of maintains it for the region and you'll see on the map roads that are, you know, red, yellow, green, um, depending on how comfortable and stressful they might be for uh, your average person to ride a bike. So that can help you um, maybe find an off road path that you didn't know about. And then the one that I use probably most often at this point 
is actually Google Maps. And so when you're putting in your starting and endpoints and getting directions, there's a little button there that has a, a bicycle icon and they give you pretty good routes. And so with that route in hand, especially if there's a place that I know I want to go a lot, um, I, I can, you know, go at a non peak time or maybe um, drive down it first sometimes to kind of check out what is this street light and I can then plan accordingly to, to make myself feel comfortable. So that's kind of usually where I would start out with trying to um, put together a ride uh, for a trip. Very cool. You know, you mentioned the, uh, you know, the, if you build it, they will come. And it sounds like exactly what happened. You know, we had the, the bike lanes that went in and you were like, I feel very comfortable driving this or driving, riding this. You know, back, uh, I think it was about 15 years ago, I uh, worked in Grandview and I didn't know anything about biking and I was kind of stupid. I did wear a helmet. That's the other thing you got to make sure you wear his helmet. But uh, I, would, I rode down High Street from basically in the middle of Clintonville all the way down to fifth and high. And this was before all the crosswalks and things like that went in. And it was a little bit a little bit dicey. And then I would take the Fifth Avenue all the way into Grandview. But if I would have known about the resources, if I would have done my homework, I would have known there are resources out there that might have said, hey, pick up the Olin Tangy path, you know, and just take that all the way, uh, or you know, down to third or something along those lines. So knowing those resources that you mentioned there are really do really make a huge difference uh, when you're going somewhere, whether if it's going to be a pleasant ride or like you say, like a white knuckle uh, uh, ride down there. Well, and one of the things when you put them together that I like with the Google Maps is sometimes it's hard to find those trail connectors if you don't already know where they are. So those streets and neighborhoods or places where you can easily get on those those trails. So um, Google Maps can help you find those uh, a little more easily. I use it a lot for that. Very cool. And you you mentioned too, if somebody doesn't have a bike, then there's the, the Kogo system. And Chet, how does that work? Like if you're not familiar, if, if somebody is hearing that Kogo term for the first time, or they're like, maybe I want to do it, but I'm a little bit intimidated by it. What's one of those steps? Thanks, David. Uh, so there's three great ways uh, that you can ask access the Kogo bike share system. So at every one of our 89 stations, uh, there's a kiosk. Uh, folks can walk up, um, swipe a credit or, credit or debit card, um, and they can they can rent a bike. Um, if folks already have the Lyft app, I know um, as part of the mobility uh, space, ride sharing is a is a is an important piece to that. So if you already have the Lyft app, uh, click on the bottom of the um, there's a bike icon at the bottom of the screen. That'll pull up the the Kogo bike share system, uh, and you can take single trips uh, as well as you can rent our e-bikes. Uh, directly uh, through the Lyft app. Um, one of the most cost effective ways uh, to use this system is by becoming a member. So if you go to our website, kogobikeshare.com, you can click join. And for only $85 uh, for an entire year, uh, you can become a Kogo member, which gives you unlimited 45 minute trips on our classic pedal bikes. Uh, it waives the unlock fees uh, and provides discounts uh, on the e bike trips uh, as well. Um, uh, this spring, we've added uh, the option to purchase our day passes directly through the website as well, which gives you unlimited trips for a, for a full 24 hours. Uh, back in 2020, we worked with the city uh, to implement an equity program. Uh, so that program is called COGO for All. And so qualifying residents that are enrolled in a state or federal assistance program, uh, like say Medicaid, uh, maybe they're receiving uh, federal student student aid like FAFSA. Uh, maybe they get SNAP benefits or even have a, a discounted utility bill. Uh, they would they would qualify uh, uh, for that same eighty five dollar membership at at a cost of only five dollars, uh, and you get additional um, discounts on your e bike trips as well as any trips that are over forty five minutes. So we're really excited about that program. Uh, new this year, Kogo is actually working with a, a wide and diverse group of community organizations to distribute 5,000 free annual memberships. So uh, if you work with an organization that maybe has some transportation challenges, uh, or maybe you see an opportunity where your clients, uh, guests, employees, 
um, might uh, be interested uh, in taking advantage of this opportunity, uh, please reach out to me. I'll throw my uh, email here in the chat. Um, and we, we, we'd love to, to chat, chat more with you. Um, we have a few events coming up. Uh, so we're partnering with Remember Us Urban Scouts, which is doing a, a, a monthly ride series every third Saturday. Uh, that'll be rotating around between a few of the uh, Columbus uh, rec centers. Uh, we'll also be at the Green Columbus Earth Day uh, volunteer celebration, uh, April 23rd uh, from 12 to 5 p.m. there at Genoa Park uh, along the side of the mile next to COSI. Uh, we'll be giving a, a free bike share membership to um, all the Earth Day volunteers. Uh, and then we're also working with the Columbus Care Coalition again this year. We did a great uh, uh, ride series last year called the, the Linden Rides for Resilience. Um, and we were looking to do something again on the, on the south side uh, this fall. So uh, three great ways to access uh, Kogo bikes via the kiosk at the stations, uh, via the Lyft app, or, or join online at kogobikeshare.com. Sounds like you got a lot going on, Chet. So that's awesome. It's, it's, a, it's gonna be an exciting year. We're, we're, we're really pumped. Yeah, it's great to hear about the, the equity focus as well to make sure that uh, no matter what your your skill level or financial level that you're able to to take advantage of Kogo and become a member and really use that service to get around. The other thing about you know bikes is that the environmental impact, right? So you're not polluting uh, when you're riding a bike, and um, you know with the exhaust from uh, gasoline and diesel vehicles that contributes to our ozone. Air quality alert days, you know, the volatile organic compounds, and they're being emitted right at, at ground level. So, the fact when you're riding a bike, you're actually reducing those emissions uh, for that. And that's obviously combating climate change. It's, um, you know, one comp key component that we need uh, to get to being a carbon neutral uh, community by 2050. Um, because as we're seeing the, the impact of climate change, if we don't uh, make progress and continue to combat that, it's, it's just going to get worse. So bike riding is a great way to stay in shape. And Chet, not to put you on the spot, but I know like Kogo at one point had how many like calories were burned, how many, all these really cool facts about like your ridership. I don't know if you still do that or not. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the number, but it was, it was in the, it was in the millions uh, of, of calories that are burned. Um, you're right. Uh, riding a bike is, is both uh, good for your physical health. Uh, you know, it can save you a trip to the gym. It's also good for your, for your mental health. Well, uh, uh, as well, we we found that, you know, employees that ride bikes uh, to the more uh, to work in the morning, they're, they're sharper. When they get there, their, their blood is already flowing. You know, they've had, you know, time to think, uh, ideas that have come to them along the way. Uh, it's also a great stress reliever too. So there's so many uh, health uh, benefits uh, to biking in addition to the environmental uh, advantages you mentioned, David. I'm gonna jump in here real quick. So um, after I started bike commuting, as people would kind of ask me about those numbers, I tracked it for a full year. And so yes. in that year, Right, I um, saved over almost 1,500 pounds of CO2 emissions. I burned over 100,000 calories, and I saved over $1,500 by riding a bike instead of driving a car between like the cost of maintenance and paying for parking um, downtown. So like the, the, the impact, right? There's the dollars and cents numbers impact of that is huge. But like the biggest thing about it was like all what, what chat, I was a happier person. Like I was more engaged at work. My coworkers could tell days that I rode my bike and days that I didn't. So, you know, when I say like th this, when I say those bike lanes changed my life and made me a different person, I can't really stress it enough. Like how much having a way to like make it sustainable for me to ride my bike and have that make sense was just a game changer. Yeah. Aaron, something you, you touched Aaron, you touched on a good point on the, on the cost savings. I think AAA says, you know, a, a typical car uh, costs, I don't know, $8,500 or so, uh, depending on whether you own it or, or you're still making car payments per year. Um, that, that's, a, that's a huge cost savings. And, you know, 
even if you you know put some of that towards a bus pass or a bike share membership or your own bike or even if you take ride sharing you're still going to save so so much money um we know as columbus becomes a, a, a more populated and more and more dense you're going to have more opportunities for you know traditional two car households to be able to downsize down to one car uh, or even you know live that um, that vibrant urban uh, lifestyle uh, and go carless. Um, so uh, I echo your sentiments, Aaron. Yeah, I mean there's there's something about when you're riding and during rush hour you have that dedicated bike lane and you're just passing all the cars. You know, it just kind of puts you in a better mood. Um, Scott, I was wondering, like, what type of, uh, since you, I mean, you've been riding for, I don't know, you know, a long time. What are some of your favorite tips to, to pass along? And what are some of the benefits that you've seen uh, from bike riding on a regular basis? Yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to say anything fresh after, after Aaron and Chet covered most of the bases. Um, so I, I got into it when I was um, going to grad school at OSU and um, I realized that it's really hard to park a car at OSU. And so it was a little bit of a necessity to find other options. Um, and, and then even after that, um, I was, you know, sharing a car with my wife and basically I worked closer to home than she did. So she needed the car and I was a little bit more risk tolerant, if I'm being honest. Um, and, and so I was like, I'll just bike to work. And that just became, became what I did. So for me, it was a little bit of necessity and a little bit of convenience that led me um, to biking, obviously. Um, what I, what else I'll say is that, you know, we can fall into this trap, I think, amongst fellow bicyclists of sort of this trap of, it, you know, it was easy for me. It should be easy for you. Everybody should do it, right? Um, or even if it wasn't easy for me, I got there, and you can get there, and everybody should do it. And and the more, you know, the more I've I've thought about this and and and, and worked in this space, that that just bike biking to work, especially, is just not going to work for everybody, right? And to find somewhere that you could bike, somewhere that you go on a regular basis or even on not a regular basis and start there. Um, and the other thing is rather than thinking of it as the goal to like, I want to sell my car and eventually, you know, biking be my main form of transportation. That's, that's great. Um, but it's a little bit more uh, re realistic to, to think of it as just one tool in our mobility toolbox, right? That we can com combine with car, we can combine with bus, ride sharing, even scootering, right? Um, and so for the people listening and the people who might be listening to this in the future, that if this is a tool that you don't currently have at your disposal, you should really look into building that skill to be one of the tools, because I think the people on this panel have found it to be, um, you know, an instrumental tool in in building financial freedom and independence and healthy lifestyles. Um, so um, it, it's a it's a very important tool in that toolbox, I think. Um, and just a shout out to Kogo because the e-bikes are a true game changer. Um, not just from a, a convenience um, aspect that you don't necessarily have to dock them at a station, but just, you know, you get where you're going faster, you are less sweaty, you work a little bit less hard, but you still get exercise, and truly anybody can do it. Um, so e-bikes, you know, I think a lot of people believe e-bikes are, are the future in terms of opening biking up to a larger population. And having your own e-bike is a very expensive proposition, but having a Kogo membership and the use of their e-bikes is a very affordable proposition and it's a great place to start. Scott, that's a great call out. Um, the the e-assist bikes, uh, they all have a battery on them. Uh, once you start pedaling the battery, the battery kicks in and it, it, does, it does the lion's share of the work. Uh, yeah, you're you're not going to show up to a meeting uh, a meeting a meeting sweaty. Uh, those bikes can go up to 20 miles an hour, so you can you know feel comfortable and confident uh, riding in traffic. Uh, honestly, the first time uh, I I jumped on one of the Kogo e-bikes, 
it, it reminded me of that that feeling of of flying uh, on a bike as a kid. It's it's honestly just it's just so much fun. Um, one of our most popular uh, trails uh, is the Scioto Mile downtown. Um, they got stations at, at North Bank Park, at at Kosai, at City Hall, at Bicentennial Park. Uh, you can even go all the way down to the Scioto Autobahn. Um, there's those are great off road off road trails um, that uh, are are fun to explore. You get to see the water on, on the river, the downtown skyline. Uh, we just can encourage anybody to to try an e bike if they haven't yet. Yeah. And if well, you know, we we talked about how fast they go. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I don't want anybody to get scared off because they do max out at like 20 miles per hour, right, Chet? And and that's not that fast. Um, it just, you know, sometimes you can be working really hard just to go 10 miles an hour on a regular bike, and these things will make 20 feel feel easy. So don't get scared off by speed. It's not that fast. Well, <laughs> and put it before, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing either, right? So, like, you, you know. Yeah, I made the change because I got addicted to it. So now like every time I go to work, right, five days a week, I'm taking the bike and for most everything else in my life, but like making one or two trips a week, right? If you change 10 or 20% of your trips that are currently in a car to a bike, you're making an impact on CO2 emissions on your bottom line, you know, on your, you know, your health, you know, so starting small is is great and it still has a big impact. And so I wouldn't want anyone to feel like it had to they had to go all in or it wasn't worth it. Just a little shift, right? Because if everybody shifted just one or two rides, that's a 10% what they call mode shift. And so that's you know less cars on our roads, that's less pollution. Um, so every little bit can really add up. Just to add on to that, Aaron, I think. You know, think of a, a specific use case where um, I, if you're like me, I hate sitting in traffic. My sister used to live in Chicago and I, 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 I could never live there. Uh, the idea of sitting in traffic for hours just makes my blood boil. But uh, if you're thinking about going down to the short north for gallery hop or going to a, a Blue Jackets or a crew game or Ohio State Buckeye game, you know, the uh, or red, white, and boom, you know, the, the traffic getting into and out of some of those, uh, locations can be a, can be a pain. Uh, that could be a great, uh, excuse and, and opportunity to jump on a bike, jump on our great, uh, central Ohio greenways and trails, uh, and, uh, and try it out. Excellent point. And, you know, the 1 thing that you all kind of touched on is that, you know, if, uh, I live in Clintonville. And I know whenever there's an OSU game, you can always tell by looking at the old Angie Trail because there's everybody will park at Park of Roses or one of the pocket parks south of there, and then they'll ride their bike to the shoe or they'll walk to the shoe. So it's a way to avoid some of that uh, costly parking. <laughs> but um, for some folks, you know, with Coda, you throw your bike on the front of Coda. Uh, sometimes I do that. I know there is some construction going on on the old Angie path that. Uh, the detours like add to my time, and I'm like, I found a different way, which is taking Coda down to about Nationwide Boulevard about the same time as if I were to bike the trail without any detours. But it's another alternative that really doesn't inconvenience me at all. Um, and I'm lucky enough that I am able to ride my bike to work, uh, you know, most of the time uh, that way. Um, you know, but you'd mentioned if you can't ride your bike to work, because there's a lot of people in that situation. Maybe if you live near a grocery store, maybe it's like you're going to do a little bit of your shopping uh, via bike. You know, I have an old milk crate. I'm sure I look funny when I'm riding my bike. I have an old milk crate on the back of my bike, right? I have a little basket in the front of my bike as well uh, that, I, that I'll, I'll stock up on some groceries that way and, and head, head home. Uh, but it really, A, you're getting that exercise that you mentioned and you just feel better uh, and getting to work too. It's like, I don't need that, uh, you know, I don't drink coffee, but I don't need that tea. I'm, I'm more focused when I bike to work. And if you're lucky enough to be able or fortunate enough to be able to take one of the trails that's along a waterway, chances are you're going to see like a blue heron. You're going to see, uh, you know, a great egret. I saw a bald eagle once and it was just really cool because you're like, oh my gosh. So it's, when I bike, I actually bring my camera with me uh, to capture some of those things. But uh, if folks uh, on the webinar here, if you have any questions or comments, 
feel free to type those in the chat or if you're on Facebook listening to us, watching us, write a comment in there and we'll try to get to them before uh, we wrap up. We have a few more minutes left. Uh, so we've talked about a lot of things here. Uh, what are, I guess I should ask, do you all have any questions for one another? Uh, would be my question to you all. And then I have a, a couple more questions uh, left to ask you. I feel like a lot of us talk to each other so much, we already have our questions for each other answered. <laughs> so. You know, it brings up a good question. Like, do you all go out and like if um, a civic association, an area commission, a community group, a school uh, is interested in having somebody come out and talk about cycling in Columbus, is that something that your organi organizations do? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, we, we present to, to community groups regularly. So, uh, Dave, I really appreciate this opportunity to, you know, to, to share the, the good word about Kogo with Greenspot. Um, you know, we've presented at St. St. Stephen's, uh, community house, um, uh, other civic groups, um, we're, ha uh, we're engaged with smart Columbus, uh, Morpsey, um, so uh, we're open to, to inv invitations. So again, my email is in the chat. Um, I'd be happy to, to follow up with anyone that's interested. And to, to echo your point, David, um, riding along a bike trail next to, next to a river, it, it's practically therapy. Uh, I mean, you've got the, you see the water, you got the fresh, the fresh air, um, you know, running through your running, running through your hair and your face. It's like a, it's like a commercial, but it just, it just feels, it feels so positive and, and, and good for the, the mind and the soul. Um, so I'll echo your sentiments there. Cool. And I like riding through the neighborhoods too, right? So my normal ride home, you know, the things that you see on a bicycle that you don't see from a car, like, you know, the, the kids rolling down the sledding hill in the spring, right? Or like, you know, somebody saw a guy singing opera to himself, walking his dog, you know, and he was pretty good. And I never would have seen that. Um, so you kind of feel a little more connected to the space that you're in when you're on a bicycle and can kind of interact with the world around you. You know, there was a, a couple of years ago, a little girl that like, I just, she and her mom were getting home from their day about the same time that I would ride by and almost every day she'd point to me and go, it's the bike lady, you know, and so it's like I was a, a fixture in my neighborhood in a different kind of way that if I just been a car driving through that I wouldn't have been. And so, like, it, it made me just, like I said, feel a little more connected to my neighbors and my place and to like doing the things that um, make Columbus neighborhoods great, you know, um, being those good neighbors being involved. So. I think it's a great kind of side benefit that I get from riding my bike. That's cool. You know, something else I was thinking about this. So yeah, you are more connected to the neighborhood when you're riding a bike, you're more aware of your surroundings. So it's keeping your men mental faculties sharp. But also if you happen to see a pothole, you could always go on the, the My Columbus app and report it and the city will come out and fill it in. So. It's uh, you can't do that if you're driving because obviously you don't want to be texting or taking pictures while you're going 35 miles an hour down the road. So this is another benefit uh, of biking. And then is hey, there is there real a quick, real quick, David? Since you yeah. mentioned 311, um, you can also if you have your favorite coffee shop or whatever business that you visit regularly and they don't have a bike rack in front and you would love to be able to park your bike there, that's an easy 311 request and the city will come out and install a public bike rack. As long as there's space, um, they'll come out and install it. So that's another really easy 311 request that people can make. Not that's while you're super riding. great tip, Scott. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, if you're a business and you want one out front, call 311 uh, with that. Now, is there a, a spot where somebody can go, like, if I'm a new rider, it's like, I know there's laws and regulations I got to follow as a cyclist if I'm riding on the road. Even if I'm riding on a, a multi-use trail like the Old Tangy, you know, you're not supposed to go above a certain speed limit. You're supposed to stay on your left when you're passing somebody. But where is a good spot uh, to find out that information um, out there? The A-Bikes blog is a great resource 
that even I regularly reference, like, I need to remind myself of all my rights and responsibilities, and they have a really good blog post on that. So go well, check it out. Thanks for the shout out. Um, so, so like we have that, there's a whole bunch of resources out there. If you Google, um, I do think ours is pretty good. Um, but I think your basic things that I'll just for folks on the line here, um, when you're riding on a road as a bike, you're supposed to follow the rules of the road like a vehicle. You're, you're considered a vehicle under the state's code. So that means you're supposed to be signaling. So, you know, a left, a straight left arm out for a left turn, either arm up like this or, or your right arm out if you're turning right. Um, you can signal stop by putting your arm down kind of like this. Um, you're supposed to stop at you know, stop signs and, and red lights and, and all of those kinds of things. Um, I'll also put a plug in for lane positioning. So I see a lot of folks, especially when they're new, will really want to like hug that right curb as close as they can. But that can actually be not the best place to ride. And so if you come a little further out from the curb, um, steering clear of, you know, at the, the door swing area for any parked cars, um, so you can ride a straight line, that's often the best place where you're more visible for cars and you're not going to be darting in and out. Um, so that so that's something that I'll try to to tell folks to do um, because you want to be predictable to cars and if they know you're riding in that straight line they'll just kind of roll they'll they'll move out and roll around you like water around a rock in a stream so uh, that that's just a nice tip I think there you mentioned some of the the trail etiquette right of of using a bell or letting somebody know that you're passing on their left so you can help avoid collisions particularly with you know walkers, joggers that are going at a different speed. Um, we just want to be kind of courteous and polite so that everybody has a nice experience on those trails. Yeah, and that's I think what it comes down to is just being polite, treating people like how you'd like to be treated, like we're all here in Columbus and we're all on the same team. So whether you're driving a car or riding a bike or any other mode of transportation that you're respectful of others. So, um, and I see Chad has put the, the Yay Bikes uh, blog in the chat. So thank you, Chad, for that. Uh, Scott mentions be visible, be predictable uh, when riding a bike. And uh, we have a few minutes left. Do you all have any? I know you've been saying a lot of lots of words of wisdom. Do you have any last uh, words of wisdom before we sign off here? Or if not, what are the what are your websites again? All right, well, I'll start with that one. Um, yaybikes.com. And so, um, you know, we post information about events we're having. Uh, we'll have some, you know, blog information and articles we share. We're also on Facebook under Yay Bikes. Uh, so check it out. Oh, and we do, I have to say, we do a signature big ride event called Bike the Sea Bus every fall. It's uh, Labor Day weekend. Registration is open, and you can find registration for that. Um, on our website, we've got multiple distances. So we've got a family ride, a 10 mile, a 30 mile, and a 60 plus mile routes that you can take. Um, it's a really great time. Um, we, we brought it back last year after having to take a pause in 2020 with the pandemic. So um, we're excited to get back up to full scale this year and hope you'll come out. I threw the link to bike the sea bus in there, Aaron. Yeah, agreed. I've done the bike sea bus uh, for a couple of years now, and it's a great event. Um, for Kogo Bike Share, uh, again, the website's kogobikeshare.com. Um, uh, if you volunteer for, for Earth Day through Green Columbus, check us out uh, April 23rd. Uh, the, the Central Ohio Greenways will be doing a ride as well uh, from Genoa Park, uh, and we'll be giving away free memberships. Um, so thanks so much for having us. Yeah. And for me, um, I think green spot has a page on biking, right? Dave, I think that's probably the best place to go for the city stuff. It might be under sustainable Columbus. Yeah. But, uh, which is like the umbrella for the city's environmental stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll, you can Google sustainable Columbus and it's the first one that pops up there. You can also get to the bike map there. Awesome. Um, I'll just say, I'll just uh, do one plug for our Green Spotlight Awards that are coming up this Friday. They are virtual this year. And um, go on our Facebook page. You can 
see the event and where the link is to join us. We'll be recognizing three businesses that have demonstrated sustainability in a great way over the past year and uh, three businesses that have graduated through our Green Spot Sustainable Business class. We also have the Franklinton High School Steel Band that will be performing, which is, I'm very excited about that. And you'll learn more about what Green Spot has going on this year, which is a lot, let me tell you. So uh, I do wanna thank um, our panelists again, Scott, Chet, and Aaron for taking time out of your day. Uh, for you all who are attending, whether watching on Facebook or on the webinar here, the WebEx, I don't see any questions. So if you do have any questions, you could always email greenspot at columbus.gov or email our uh, panelists uh, directly. So with that, we're gonna stop the recording and uh, I appreciate everybody's time. Thank you. Thanks, David.